Welcome back to the Brighter Side of Blue, our worldwide podcast coming to you from Columbo's Cafe and Tavern in Dogtown, St. Louis. I'm Danny. I'm Tommy. I'm Brian. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I'm JJ. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Producer John. I'm JJ. <laughs> and Producer John's in the house. Dude, you got to be JJ. John. It's not very welcome. You're fall- hey, you're John, they, they skipped you too? No, you talked over my name. <laughs> Sorry. You wanted to get double JJ in there. Oh, man. All right. We can only take the one JJ. Hey, Some things Brian never change. Real quick and why we had him on the show. As he you just guys did. Know. He just introduced himself. Ah, but you know, he, the, the listeners uh, don't really know him. They might recognize him from the neck similarities. I got He's him. in town for the weekend. <laughs> um, I think he looks like his mom. It's Danny's boy, Brian. And uh, he came in town. And, and uh, we, as you guys know, we list, we, we uh, big, big on family here. Anytime we can get uh, somebody on here uh, that's related to us and has a good story, and uh, one of the, st- the story that we're going to cover, mostly um, along other things, was Brian had a uh, an opportunity to chase a childhood dream, and uh, Brian started out here at St. Louis U. I'm, I'm before that, obviously. And today's the day it came true. The dream. Yeah, yeah. He, he's on the podcast. <laughs> right. yeah. Congratulations, congratulations, man! Hey, nice work. Right. Way to stay focused. All right, yeah. we're done with Brian. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Congrats. <laughs> but no, Brian went to uh, St. Louis U High here and was a, a baseball standout. And he went on to TCU, and then he went from TCU uh, to the uh, professional leagues and uh, got all the way up into AAA, and um, worked his butt off and and uh, did what he could and it just fell short. And but we're going to talk about that later. Welcome, Brian. Thank you for having me. Um, just in town today, and uh, I see Chief Species here in the house tonight. The first picture I saw when I landed from Texas was uh, Chief Spice and the cup, the Stanley Cup. Uh, okay. We have a St. Louis native who won the cup with the Florida Panthers, so we're all really happy. And uh, they brought the cup, the cup by the Brentwood Police Station today, and we got some pictures of it. Holy cow. That's the only trophy... That he's ever actually touched. <laughs> trust me. Hey, trust me. Yeah, space. Right. Yeah, that, that's a great picture. He he really loves that trophy, being the only one. But that, that was really touched. cool. Uh, Jim Mayer, who's been mentioned on the show before. Uh, yeah. You know, with the Blues, and uh, him and uh, the Kachuk family, stop by the Brentwood Police Station, and let the guys uh, get their picture taken with it. We see uh, our boy Bo up there. Uh, Tony Lockenick is up there with the whole Kachuk family. And then they also took it to the fire department, which is pretty cool. And uh, well, they took it by there, but they were all sleeping, and so they had to keep on going. <laughs> hey, did it. they call you guys? Tell them that this is going to happen. No, we got no. You know, Joe, we've had him on the show like eight times or whatever. You think, you think he'd give us a heads up and say, "Hey, this be a cool picture." No, actually, I, I remember from when the Blues won it. There, there, there's there was no heads up. They don't want to, right. other people come right. in other than the the group that's supposed to see it. Yeah, I can see that. So Brentwood's like the landing spot of the cup, though. Hey, Brentwood. Hey, it's because of the Chief Space is doing a great job. The, a poll, an, a, a nationwide poll just came out, and Brentwood was named number seven best places to live, and that's because of Joe. 100% because no of Joe. There ain't no doubt. 100%. Hmm. He's a lot better at Would being a chief rate? of police than he was at fuzzball or any other sport. <laughs> you know? But one thing you'll notice on these pictures and I, uh, is Matthew's um, hand never comes off the cup while other people are touching it. And I, I think that's a protocol, isn't it, John? Is that if one of the players has it, that nobody else is to touch it alone? So yeah. It's, it's more of a tradition, I think. Okay. That's cool. Uh, uh, that thing Jack. was floating in the ocean after the, g- the game, though. What but happened? Fine. Matthew's hand was on it, though. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> that's a floating <laughs> device? The day after they were celebrating, they went to the, the beach, and that thing was floating in the, the ocean. Well, it was like when uh, um, pretty cool. Brady threw the uh, Super Bowl trophy, and it hit the boat and landed in the water as well. Hmm. Uh, no, a trivia question for you, uh, Producer John. What's Keith Kachuk's uh, nickname? Walt. Walt. Big did you, Walt. Did you right. know that, Brian? Yes. Do you even remember that guy, Keith Kachuk? Sure. Yeah. He played for the St. Louis Blues. Matthew Kachuk uh, and Jason Tatum, who also won the NBA championship this year, were high school classmates at Chaminade. Uh, they were a couple years younger than me, but I remember both of them coming up thinking, wow, we got a couple of superstars over there at Chaminade. <laughs> did Tatum dunk on you? No, 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 no. I, I retired from basketball uh, by the time that Jason came right. to the MCC Metro Catholic Conference. <laughs> I tried my best and turned out pitching was a lot, was going to work out a little bit better for me than uh, basketball. Hey, I got a Walt story. Go ahead. He, when they were in strike that year, mm-hmm. 
a couple of blues played in the police firemen game. He wanted to play for the fire department because his dad, I think, was a fireman. Yeah. So he played against the police, and I was. It's a non-checking uh, game, whatever. I guess right. it gets a little chippy, but it's not supposed to be checking. I was tan, I was parked in front of the net, and I got a little shove to the ground, cross check. Wasn't it like just a more of a push by a very strong person? Went on the ground. I was like I turned around, like what the fuck? I look up and he's smiling at me. Just, Walt knocked just, you on your butt. Yep. Give you a little. I got that. I got that gold from. Who won that game? I think uh, I don't remember. I think we did. You think you don't remember, or do you remember? I don't really remember. Okay. But usually, policemen usually dominate. Fountain of knowledge. But also on the show coming up um, after we interview Brian, and we're looking forward to that. We'll get into that. But uh, Chief Steve Dodge is here, and we're going to talk about the uh, the Ferguson riots. Um, Steve was the commander of the SWAT team at the time, and JJ was his sergeant. And um, they have some neat stories. Um, some of them are, are pretty cool. And we're going to give you the perspective from them, from their part. Not, we're not getting into the incident or anything like that. Just what they did on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. We were we texting back and forth, and they have some pretty cool stories. So that's going to be coming up. So stay tuned for that. And if you're t I'm sure that's going to be the title of this show. So if you're looking to get into that, you may want to check below. And um, what, gonna What's going to be the title of the show? You didn't finish any sentences there. The, the Ferguson riots okay. will be, you know, there. So a lot of people are going to chime into this, look, looking to go right to the Ferguson riots, and I'm just telling them to look below the in the description. We'll have the time frames. Oh, nice, nice. So See skip, so skip. Is it my Zen and everything? Just go straight to that. So we can people, never, we can never skip. We're never going to do that. We'll we'll never, don't, 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 again, don't bring it up early now. <laughs> Tommy, what's going on with our favorite mayor up in uh, Chicago? Oh, see, your Brandon boy, Johnson. Your boy Brandon Johnson. He. Uh, the same guy last week we talked about that uh, blamed the uh, 120 shootings in Chicago. He blamed it on Tricky Dick, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. So this week, I, I don't know how there's going to be any more crime. Um, he <laughs> took out the statue of George Washington in City Hall. So that, I would have, I would imagine that's going to seal it up. And that's a done deal. So no he's, he's anti-American. You would think George Washington. And that's, you know what? People vote for him. They get what they deserve. Everybody knows George Washington never told a lie. Cut down a cherry tree, though. He's no longer in the Chicago City Hall. I think that was Abe. Are, are you serious? Up. That's, that that's really, there. he's really did yeah, doing yeah. that. He really did yeah. that. It's a crime strategy. The, that's crazy. <laughs> it's, dude. It's, all, it's all the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, 10 o'clock. Where do you know where your kids are? And they're just, you know. <laughs> Taking down George Washington statues. Yeah. They're focusing on dead presidents. <laughs> it's so, unreal, dude. Different strategies. Different strategies. Oh. Brian, how you doing? Sorry, you, uh, no. we're just kind of ignoring you over there. Oh, though, but everything's good. You know, I'm happy to be back in St. Louis. All right, love it here. Yeah. And uh, so, what, what what's what's next chapter? Yeah, I'm stepping away from baseball. Um, actually, I haven't announced my retirement so uh, anywhere. So let's announce it on brighter side of blue. There you go. Well, hold on. Before we do that, is, there, if, is anybody looking for a, a uh, six might, nine righty? That might, you, no, my after the All Star break. A uh, team in the Mexican League uh, reached out. I, dis I decided to turn it down. What, 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 I didn't know move. about this. I'm only your father. I know. I was, it, was not, uh, it, it wasn't going to work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't going to be the right next move for me. But I, I did receive an offer. Um, I told him that I haven't played catch in a year. That did not deter. <laughs> um, so I'm officially retired from, from baseball. Announced tonight. All right. On the you're gonna have some, all right. You're going to have some beer baseball league guys listening and be like, hey, let's call this dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he'll be going back to Texas, and uh, he's starting a new job on Monday, correct? Starting a new job. Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome to the real world, world, brother. Yeah. Let's see yeah. how it goes. But I wanted to go, <laughs> go back to um, your SLU. So that's where you made your, your SLU high is where you, yep. you, know, you really took off. Obviously, you were dominant in, in Little League. High school is a little different, and you played for a St. Louis legend amongst here in South St. Louis, Steve McCollar. Yep. And uh, how was that? Awesome. Uh, Coach Nicola was awesome. I mean, he'd been doing it for so long. and uh, He coached me. He coached me. Yeah, he coached my dad. Um, and so, you know, getting the opportunity to play for him. Uh, we, we never won a state championship, but we had some really good teams. Uh, I think sophomore year we were 24-1. and one. Um, So, I mean, he, he just knows the game so well, but I don't think that was the most important thing that he did. I think he was – He's been doing it for so long because he did a good job of helping develop young men. So I think that, like that. Coach Nicola was 
an instrumental part of my journey uh, throughout baseball and, and really throughout life. And he's a, um, a literally a St. Louis legend. Oh, oh yeah. He was that oh, yeah. for how long? Oh, I don't even know. I, years after I left and... Man, I want to say 20-something. Oh, I know he's in 30-something. Yeah, 30, I want to say 37. Years, sure. Yeah. But that was... That, that's, and then you played for him at the, towards the end yeah. of his career, which was... Yeah, towards the know. end. But he was there after I left. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he had... I mean upwards of 25 consecutive district titles. So he, what, what he built at SLU and what, what they've got going on there uh, is, is amazing. Yep. And then you move on to TCU, but I think one of the uh, interesting, and to keep a St. Louis tied to all this, is that who, was, who recruited you here in St. Louis from TCU? Yeah, uh, Tony Vitello. So uh, the recruiting coordinator before I got to TCU was Tony Vitello. Um, his dad was a lifelong coach at DeSmet. Uh, equally as, you know, legendary as Coach Nicole Rott. I think he coached baseball and soccer at DeSmet. Um, and, and he called his son and said, hey, there's a pitcher up here. Uh, maybe you come take a look at. And uh, so that's kind of how that journey started. And um, now Coach Vitello was never at TCU at the same time as me. Um, he, he, he left for Arkansas and then obviously now he just won a national championship with Tennessee. Um, but yeah, so it was really St. Louis that got me to TCU. Yep. And then, and not like I said, you said he just won a uh, national championship, yeah. and I guess it's kind of neat for you to, to to the guy you recruited just won a national championship. The recruited you, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, no, I wish it was TCU. So, oh, absolutely. There's, there's uh, I, I I am happy for Coach Vitello. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a big accomplishment, but yeah. Well, the, you tied it. That'll never be. You tied a record that'll never be broken. Yeah, and you hold it with a couple other people, but. Brian went to, when he went to TCU, he went to the junior, or junior, he went to the um, NCAA College, cha- World Series. College World Series for all four years, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It and you it. pitched in it all four years. Yeah. Right. So it was a pretty cool run. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if you if you go to school, you want a chance to play in, uh, in Omaha in the College World Series, and to get the opportunity to do it every year is unheard of, and so... It was definitely a really, really fun experience and uh, good time in my life. So now you're just you're you're a freshman in college, and you know you're just getting your feet wet with this. You go to the junior college World Series, and I've been to those. And I didn't go. You know, to you're it's a not a junior college World Series. I'm sorry, no, I keep no, saying that because no I, I, went, I was in the junior college. college World Series. I'm sorry. I just no, tried to pump okay. myself up. That's oh, why you I keep did. Saying that, <laughs> in uh, Grand Junction. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, that's a very, very, very cool event. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. That's when I when we were at, when I was at Scottsdale Community College. We went there. Yeah, I mean, my roommate um, at TCU played and won uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, with Iowa Western Community College, Ryan yeah. Merrill. Oh, oh, Tommy okay. could have went to Division One baseball, but he forgot to go to class while he was in yeah, junior school college. Wasn't, yeah, school wasn't my forte. No. So anyway, cla- <laughs> enough of me. <laughs> but and, and what I'm saying though is that the same thing happened to me, and I'm sure it happened to you. Is I was totally surprised of all the kids that were there asking for autographs. Yeah. And there you are, you're 19 years old, you're right out of high school, and you're kind of a dummy. You know, at least yeah. I was. And then I got people coming up wanting me to sign stuff, and and, and, and I'm sure that happened to you, correct? Yes. There was uh, definitely in Omaha. There's a lot of events specifically for that um, where you you sign memorabilia and all that kind of stuff and a lot of people want to try to you know get something that's signed by every player in a specific year so I I always thought it was cool Um, during batting practice it's definitely the first time I've ever had to like catch a fly ball while I'm shagging and then realize that there's a hundred kids asking throw the ball up here throw the ball up here so you got to get, you know, you, you learn it's like one per every three balls that you catch because those baseballs cost five dollars. You learn that quick. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Hey, did you ever oh, get a, you? did did you ever get a chance to bat being uh, a pitcher? It was uh, at SLU at SLU High. No, yes. no, no, yeah, but I'm TCU. No, no, no. no. TCU or professional baseball? No way. And, <laughs> and I think everyone was better for that fact. <laughs> <laughs> Who hit the longest bomb off you? How far uh, was Sean it? Sean Watkins. Loyola Marymount University 2015. Uh, it, it, they had a, <laughs> I'll never forget it. They had a blue monster in left field, taller than taller than uh, the green monster in Fenway, or at least it looked like it. Threw a 2-1 heater right down the middle, and he hit it 878 <laughs> feet. 
Uh, I, no one would let me live it down, so much so that uh, <laughs> we're flying back to Texas from California, Loyola, Marymount University, and uh, we're, you know, we're on the plane, and, and uh, the flight attendant about halfway through the flight says, and uh, we have special guests on the plane here today, Texas Christian University baseball team, and all my friends are videoing me, and I'm thinking... All right, whatever. So I, I kind of like ham it up for the, the video saying like, yeah, go frogs. And then she says, and uh, if you guys look out your left window, you'll see the home run ball that Brian Howard gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I'll never forget that one. So you guys were just on the plane as part of the whole plane, though, right? So other yes, people so it was that. a Southwest flight, and uh, <laughs> a couple of the older guys <laughs> went up to the flight attendant and just begged her to make that announcement midway through the flight. And it, it, yeah. That's fun. Backfire on me. That's fun. <laughs> and that's part of the being a team, the, the yes, being a absolutely. part of the teams, yeah. the, the camaraderie that and, and the fun that you had over yeah. the years. You can't take it too seriously. Uh, you take it seriously when you're on the field, but once you get off of it, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. I mean, I should have thrown a heater right down the middle. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and, Those guys get scholarships your, too. Uh, just being friends with your father, I followed your career pretty closely over the years. And a couple times, and I believe it was your junior year in particular, you started off really rough. And um, in, in a couple of years, and, I, and me and your dad would talk, and even though you had a couple rough outings, you would come back with like seven in a row that were just really good. And that, I always told your dad that that was the most impressive, that that what has impressed me the most about you is the, the fact that no matter how bad you did on a particular day, you would always bounce back and do really good. Yeah, I think that just goes with uh, baseball as a whole. Um, it's an individual team sport where you're going to fail, and uh, I definitely failed a lot. <laughs> Uh, so I learned how to deal with it quick. Um, you know, there's eight other guys at a time, up to 40 other guys that are really counting on you. So if you dwell on it too long, you know, you're not just letting yourself down. You're letting down everybody else. So it takes, uh, takes a little bit to get used to that kind of thing. And, and then you kind of just, especially when you get into pro ball, you just got to say, oh, bad day at work. Right. What, how do I fix it? Right. Yeah. Sh yeah. Short I memory. I remember, Brian, just watching – you gave up a long home run, but when when they threw the new ball and it was just like they're just throwing back a foul. You know, you just had a foul ball hit off. Of yeah, it. yeah. It didn't seem to phase you at all. It just well, that's what happens. You give a lot of long home runs. <laughs> <laughs> kind of short memory, bro. Yeah. 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 Short mean, memory. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I mean, uh, I've always I've always said that I'd rather, you know, d depending on the score, obviously, if it's a tie game or we're up by one. I don't want to give up a homer, but I'd rather I'd rather get, you know if we're up a couple runs I'd rather give up a homer than walk a guy and and then start a rally that way. Right. So, you know, homers happen. Uh, you know, I've had uh, a couple of my buddies from TCU that went on to play professional baseball. We we would have a group message just about homers. Uh, you know, <laughs> who gave up the longest one that week? Who you know, see who can <laughs> I'll top that in five days. But you know, and, and who can make it the funniest on a text? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at this one. You won't believe this. But then you know, if you look up and you went six or seven innings and only gave up two or three, hey, the home run's kind of funny. And, would, and uh, you don't want any cheap ones. You don't want wall scrapers if you're giving up a homer. I've always, I, I, I'll stand by that forever. <laughs> Give up a bomb so it's entertaining? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fans that come to watch the games. They don't want to see a wall scraper. They, don't, they definitely don't want to see a walk in a run. So <laughs> give up a homer, get the ball back from the umpire, and try not to do it again. There you go. Now I was told I those hitters – those hitters are on scholarship too. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. As you move up, it gets everybody gets a little better and a little better. Yeah. 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 One of the other interesting stories I found about you both, and I'll, I'll have Danny handle this one, is uh, when Brian got drafted. Um, there was uh, so go through, um, and you are acting as his agent for the day. Yeah. Well, first of all, he got dra he was drafted by the Houston Astros his junior year, and he and he turned that down, and so um, big mistake. Yeah, so now he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now it's his senior year and it's draft day and he has to go to practice. And he said so he said he was able to monitor the first round from before practice. And he said, "But dad, if if you have to uh um if 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 I have to go to practice, you're going to have to take the phone calls. I'm going to switch the numbers to you." He said, "But it's no it's a no-brainer. You just have to say yes. Pick up the phone and say yes." And so I said, uh, okay. So I'm at a, a, a police conference, and the foundation uh, 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 liaison, Michelle Bagwell, was sitting behind me, and I look at my phone, and it's about dead. Because he, he switched it to me. He said, you're on. Anybody call, just say yes, and I'll call you after practice. Let me know who, who I got drafted by. So um, 
I freak out. It's it's the phone's going dead. I saw Michelle Bagwell. She lent me a uh, charger, so now I'm this and that. So the phone rings, and my heart just drops in my stomach. And it's the uh, um, Chicago Cubs. I think it was the first one to call. Hey, uh, this is uh, this is Dan Howard uh, representing Brian Howard. Uh, um, w uh, w this is uh, such and such from the Chicago Cubs. We're up in the next pick in the draft. We want to know if uh, if your son will take an offer of I don't I don't even remember what it was. I think it was like forty thousand dollars. And I'm like, I know I'm supposed to say yes, but forty thousand. I said I, I don't I don't think that one's gonna work. They go, okay, thanks. I'm like, I hang up the phone, I turn around to Michelle Bagel, I go, he told me all I have to do is say yes. <laughs> the only thing I do is say yes. And I said, I said no to the Cubs. Then the Phillies called. I said no to them. Then the Diamondbacks called. I said no to them. And, then, and it was 25000 I know. I said, <clears throat> um, and then the Oakland A's called, and I knew the uh, um, um, scouting director, right, Dan Kantrovic. Mm -hmm. And um, I got him up. I got him. I got the money up, Could and you? he said, "Now forty-one thousand dollars." <laughs> <laughs> no, they just paid for the same offer, but they got me a plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, "Okay, well, we're up. We got to finish up this. To go. Will you accept it?" And I said, "Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. The phone didn't ring for another hour after the last thing." And I go, "Okay, that's it. I just ruined my son's pro career." I said no to everybody, and now the phone goes dead. Nobody's calling, and then the A's called, and. Uh, um, knew Dan Canterbury. He used to be with the Cardinals, and um, so Brian took the job and spent six years with the Oakland A's. And then where where did you go? The, what was your first assignment? Uh, I played for a team called the Lake Monsters in uh, Burlington, Vermont, and it was awesome. Uh, beautiful town, and this you know it was this time of year, so beautiful weather on a lake, gorgeous. Really? And, it, oh, it was a it was a blast. Honestly, that was like more like just a continuation of college then right. and then the next year my job started okay um, so that was what, rookie ball the first yeah, one short season which they actually um they got rid of in professional baseball they when they condensed the rosters they got rid of the level short season which i think i don't I, I wish they wouldn't have that was an awesome like get your feet wet in professional baseball learn what it's like introduction but it, it was it was essentially an extension of uh college but it was really fun and then to Stockton? Yep, started in uh, 2018 in Stockton, California. I was there for about two months. That's kind of a dangerous place, isn't it? it yeah. That's, okay. I'm just, I'm they just, need to get themselves yeah. a Brandon Johnson. They are Brandon Johnson <laughs> up there. Yeah. Get that place locked <laughs> down. <laughs> Pay more attention to Tricky tr 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 Dick. And yeah, all right. yeah uh, exactly. I got called up to Midland, Texas about halfway through that double season. Double A? Yeah, double A. Uh, Midland, Texas. Finished the year there. Next Picture year. of the year? Not that year. Okay, next year. Um, then the next year, back in Midland in Vegas, split time, and then Vegas, Vegas, COVID. How was Vegas? That it was. I cool. love that, huh? Uh, yeah, it was fun. The ball <laughs> flew out of there, though. Yeah, well, that sounds like an excuse. Yeah, it it it's the nicest minor league facility in all of baseball. Uh, it's gorgeous. Living in Las Vegas is awesome. Um, plenty of stuff to do. Right, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So bet on college baseball. No, no, <laughs> yeah. 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 bet on minor league baseball. Minor league. No, <laughs> none of that either. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I'll um, always remember is when you were with double when you were in double A, and you came to Springfield, Missouri, and oh, yeah. played the Cardinals in the double A game, and and myself and, and, and Danny and all of our friends went up there, and, and uh, Joe Spees, and about uh, forty. Yeah, there was about forty of us, and then Brian pitched that night, and um, your father. Got pulled out of the booth. We were, we were all had a party booth, and uh, your father got pulled out and put on the radio. And we were thinking, oh, this <laughs> is where my good. podcasting career started. Yeah. That's it. They I was, saw in, I was interviewed in the, in the, the box. Yeah. yeah, they saw something. You did special. nail it. Yeah. yeah, they said. I'm we, surprised you're not doing that for a living. I am. This is this, is, this is my living. This is it. <laughs> Brighter side of blue. This is it. What's our Venmo uh, address? You, you can get to? it on the web page. No, I know, no, but what, isn't there some numbers or some? Give me your digits, John. What are, what's the Venmo? It's the brighter side of blue. I'll create it. At, at, <laughs> at Venmo? We don't want to trick yeah, nobody, you want Brian. Venmo, yeah, this, this he is never Venmo. He's obviously blue. never Venmo. No. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, because I, I have a new thing. If I, You know, I have a lot of friends and a lot of family. First, for now on, before yes. I even say hello, I'm going to say, did you Venmo anything to the brighter side of blue? And if they say, no, I'm not talking to them. Mm -hmm. Nobody. 
<laughs> you know who one of our original donors was? Wasn't it? Your uh, wife? Did you know it? Oh yeah, she did. Yeah, she Denise, did. She did. So then I saw. She didn't clear that. Through. And Cece, oh, your yeah. buddy Cece, uh, Queen of Downtown. Yep. Mary Michelle, big law enforcement. Mary Michelle chipped in. Yeah, she was. A, Mary Michelle was first, then Cece, then Denise, and Look. Denise and Cece were like right back to back. People I thought are digging it. Denise they're, was they're all having appreciate no, the shit out or appreciate they're that. Having, they're all having brunch together. I heard. Yeah. yeah. Denise, Denise gave us ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much appreciated. Denise. But one of the things too, Brian, that I wanted to ask you, and, and uh, I know your dad was your coach when you were little, mm -hmm. and I having my son that's gone through this, and and everybody's out there has had a, a son or a daughter that chases their dreams like that. Um, and the dedication that it takes, the time that it takes. Um, I just want to let you talk a little bit about your mom and dad through that journey. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I probably don't do a good enough job of, of saying thank you for what, what it must have taken. Um, obviously, when you're, you know, 12, 11, that age, and you just think you're going to play baseball, and then all of a sudden, I think that there's probably things that start to change where it's like, well, how long can you do this? And then it takes an, a whole other level of commitment from them where it's not just, you know, going to play baseball with your friends anymore. And they and I think that if there was a handbook for how to handle uh, someone going to play baseball at the next level, higher level than, you know, Little League and then high school and then college and baseball, I think my parents would have done, they should write the handbook on it because it took so much more from them than I would ever be able to repay them in terms of, driving me to practice and then you know handling what like we said it's a game of failure and sometimes I'd come home and I failed you know and then you know talk about how it feels to move on from that and so both my dad and my mom I think raised me in a way that I, I was able to do that and I, I don't think that just comes to anybody so I think that everything that they gave to me I'll never be able to repay them but I definitely am grateful for it I That's remember nice. Uh, my dad taking me up to St. Raphael the Archangel, our, our, our parish, um, when I was in like eighth grade, probably, eighth grade. And uh, I, wasn't, I was struggling in baseball. I wasn't, I wasn't very good. I was probably towards the bottom of my little travel ball team. And it looked like it was more of a hobby than anything else at that point. And instead of, you know, pushing me or saying anything, my dad just looked at me and said, hey, man, what do you want to do? Uh, I'll create a B team for you. You can go down and, and play, b play ball with your friends. Um, I, I don't think that's the right thing, but he didn't ever push me or, or make me do anything that I didn't want to do. And then when I did want to do stuff, he was always there to make sure I had the best options available to me. And I don't think it would have been possible for me to chase my dream as long as I did without them. I, I don't think. I know. So obviously, cool. I don't awesome. know if I'll be able to repay him for that. But I know they were your biggest fans by far. Yeah, I think so. all, uh, they were all two of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 was, I was paying attention, brother. I yeah, I, I got. I want to tell a story about this the Danny and the son. The fuzzball tournaments that Brian Rossimano used to do. Yeah. And Danny is the most competitive. You guys all know this. He is so competitive that he verges on on cheating. That's how competitive he is on these fuzzball because you the call courage. your own strike. Yeah. So one of the tournaments one year, he and I guess you were in high school. You were getting maybe senior but you were in the paper you were tearing up high school and you, you might be able to correct me so the tournament's getting ready to start and it's a bunch of teams and he, you walk in with him and I, i'm like i walk up to dan and i go are you serious you're gonna have your son pitch that's how competitive you are you can have your son pitch against <laughs> us he goes he ain't touching a fuzzball he's just here to bat <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, right. I with uh chief speech in here tonight i have a story about that exact day that <laughs> go I ahead, very tell good. uh chief speech you might remember this I was batting. It was, it was the three of us. Right? Well, he's that a competitive was asshole too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, uh, I'm not an asshole, but he's a competitive. We were, we were playing a game, fuzzball, and a couple pitches came high and tight to me, and I was, I, 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 I don't, I was, at SLU, but probably 13 or 14, 15 years old, whatever. I yeah. was playing. Yeah. A couple pitches were coming high and tight, and uh, I think one ended up hitting me, and. You two were behind me watching, and it looked like somebody opened the gate. You guys were charging them out to go <laughs> get the guy that hit me. <laughs> no, I never came to that, but yeah. all I remember is uh, I think you said, well, it was just a question of who was going to get there first. <laughs> well, I was faster than Joe. <laughs> I still am. 
both got bro- both got replaced hips, I believe. Broke right? ass hips. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> worked out good. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say back there in the peanut it's gallery? Unfair, he's, he's getting yeah, picked no, on. He's got no mic. Do you got, understand how much I'm a, enjoying this? He wants a I mic. I get to rip on Chief's piece, <laughs> and he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> he he has sit over there. Hey, take it. <laughs> <laughs> sit there and be quiet and take it. <laughs> I love it, man. Hell yeah. Let's keep it going. So, Brian, if you were in town and you needed a car um, <laughs> oh, to get around. No doubt. You, and, and I believe... You went to school with a Schicker. I did. Alex Schicker, uh, like St. Raphael, where we had that conversation. Uh, went to school together. Um, he was a year younger than me in school, but we, that didn't stop us from being running buddies. I remember pool hopping with Alec. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's – probably shouldn't say we that. We cut that out. No, you can say it. Well, we'll we knew everyone that owned the pool. Right. They just didn't know no, we were exactly. going to be in the time. <laughs> yeah. right. yeah. Didn't, didn't um, have their schedule. Yeah, well, that's – we uh, have our people talk to their people. Um but yeah, so Schicker Automotive, uh, unbelievable family-owned business here in St. Louis. Um, now I, I've just received word, come across my desk that they're offering a concierge service. Okay, now this service will pick up the vehicle. Did you know about this? It'll pick up the vehicle <laughs> where they're at work or at home. Yeah, okay. service it yep. and bring it back to where they picked it up. Come on now. Now I know that's. I mean, that's top. When notch. Alex Schicker was in sixth grade, I said, you know what he's going to do someday? That. He's gonna have a concierge service. That'll pick up the <laughs> we were learning, we were doing finger painting and yes. all that stuff, and I said, that kid's gonna have a concierge. Most likely to have a concierge yeah. service. <laughs> yes. and I was, hey, I was, and he yeah. won that vote. I would hey, Brian, that. I don't think we can pay you a whole lot, but why don't you take your dad's spot? Screw that job. My parents <laughs> will be glad to you stay here. You can live at home still, yeah. and take his spot. Okay. When does he start? <laughs> <laughs> He's a natural. So, well, thank you for that. Yeah, Schicker Automotive Group. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I think they got that first first Saturday of the month coming up where they, um, if you go in and test drive, I know that won't be this particular Saturday, but first Saturday of the month, wasn't it, John? The first Saturday of the month. Yeah. They have you go in there and test drive it. And they twenty five dollars to make a dream or make oh, a wish how about foundation. That? That's amazing. Yeah. They do they do need stuff like that all the time. But yeah, Schicker Automotive. Thanks for that, Brian. Absolutely. All right, anything else for, uh, where, where are we going next, Tom? I think JJ's got something for Zen, doesn't he? No, I think, yeah, I think. Uh, Does Brian, Brian said Brian he has a Zen. Yeah, Brian might hey, have a Zen, too. Yeah, I think this is Brian's Zen. a Zen off. Oh, boy. A Zen off. Is that all right? JJ, is it okay? This, this I, just, I have a little Zen. It's not a big Go for zen. it. Go for it, big boy. <laughs> 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 so, do you normally, you look in the camera for this one, right? You do whatever you want. Oh, okay. I usually yeah. like stutter and stammer and <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> so I was going for the like four texts. I didn't know. I Don't worry about it. If you fuck it up, so, if your friends so are here's Jack, my fix it. I, I, I learned this a long time ago, and I, uh, I, try, I try to live by it, but it, it is a tough one to live by, but you try to. So life is like a road trip, okay? So imagine right now we're going from Columbo's here in Dogtown to New York City on a road trip. But yeah. we're starting at night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. How, how far can we focus? Producer John, how far can we focus? We're starting at night. At night? Um, focus on my eyelids. <laughs> oh, okay. See, well, that's not. So life is like a road trip, okay? So if we're starting this at night, you only have the next 200 feet because that's all that your headlights will provide you to see. So if we're driving from Columbo's in Dogtown to New York City, we can't see past those 200 feet. If we focus on New York City, we'll never make it. So take what's in front of you, the next 200 feet in your day, in your life, and that's how you'll reach your goals. That was good. Oh, JJ's oh, I'm not going to do that. Is that <laughs> brand? I'm no, not going to do mine. Did you make that up? <laughs> no, he just rattled that off. It was a I'm story. A, that was a Zen I'm gonna story. I'm going to take a pass on mine. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. I was kind of like, where is the hell is he going with this? And then he wrapped then he it up. He's it going up like a champ. Oh, he bitch. he, he should take strong. your spot. <laughs> do I do mine still or no? <laughs> yeah. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. All right. Say it again. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Two strong Zens tonight. We're going to walk away Two with some knowledge zans. up in this show. That is, that's huge. I just feel better. I, wrote I feel that. like a better person I'm now. I wrote good. that. I came up with that. I sat down and wrote that. You did? You did good. That's you did? It was an original. That's why you didn't stutter and no, it up like some kind of. It wasn't original. I, it was, uh, 
I'm not sure who it was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to start when you don't. You know when you were on a roll is when people were giving it, and then you you would say their name before you get this came from so and so, and I think you were doing that so we wouldn't get on you because you were like shielding yourself with know. their name from a Zen so we wouldn't make fun of somebody. I believe else. it was Winston Churchill. You use him a lot. I know he's great, but I'm not. I'm not 100 percent because I really don't remember. <laughs> Where I found that, you know, but I almost think that that was him. I read so many, man. Sure I'm does telling sound you, like Winston. It does sound like. Do Winston. you know when the uh, Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor? Winston Churchill got on a battleship the next day and floated across to the United States Zoomed and stayed in the White House. Stayed in the White House, lived there for three or four weeks. Stayed in the White House. With um, Harry Harry S. Truman, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, with Harry Truman. I don't know. And they were like they were like thicker thickest right. thieves. Yeah. But I just thought it was weird that he he said, "Hell, I'm going to go over there, and they're going to make all their decisions from the white with Winston Churchill there with that. him." It was safer than staying in England. It was safer. It was safe. it was <laughs> not as safe as Chicago, right. but <laughs> nowhere close. No, nowhere as close. How can so. it be? <laughs> yeah. So. Well, Brian, it was, it was an honor Thanks. having Hold you on. Hold on. I want to do, before, before we get into, oh. uh, I just want one You last always question. do that to me. Like, when I'm like. you like Tom Melichuk right, right now. He's new Melichuk. Yeah, he's new Melichuk. Yeah. One more. I mean, one, one more. Thing. One Did more. You, ne- like we said, next, we're having Steve Dodge. Yeah. And we're going to talk oh. about the Ferguson riots. You see yeah. where I'm going now? Yeah, I do. I, and I apologize. About. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just, you just a little slow with it. So, and what I wanted to ask was, Brian, you you were at TCU when the Ferguson riots kicked off. Yes. Your dad was a policeman. Yep. So, what was the when you go back to school after the August there? You're down there. What are your, what's the top? What's the hot topics? What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean everybody was asking, you know, the same question: what's going on? And everyone at TCU knew what my dad did, um, and so it was, hey, what's going on with your dad? What's going on? And uh, I just remember, I think. You know, I, I was up here because it was summer ball or oh. whatever. I was in St. Louis for a little bit during it. I got a correction. It wasn't. It, well, I'm sorry. It just came to me. It wasn't true. It was FDR. It was FDR. I know, who did well, I say? Man, Harry no S. one's Truman? coming here for history. Tr- Truman's <laughs> one. <laughs> Nobody's coming here for him. My brother would be so mad that I didn't pick that up. Well, Truman right. bombed Pearl Harbor. <laughs> If someone says, no, no uh, it was Truman. I heard it on the brighter side of blue. <laughs> he dropped it. Well, well, yeah, no checking here. F- F- uh, FDR was the, originally the president when World War II, but Truman was the one that bombed Pearl Harbor. Not, bo- not Pearl Harbor. He, bo- he Truman bombed, bombed Pearl, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. This he is bombed off Japan. The track. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> man, you got to straighten this one I'm supposed to be up. the history guy. All our history teachers are rolling over, just laughing their asses off at us. When the Ger- with Brian, the no, there's Pearl not a person. That is listening to this show. That's that's worried about history. It's like hey, they're getting their history <laughs> well, wrong. They might they, be they worried about this to get but shit wrong. They can't come here for my it. brother is a history you know, expert. He's and so is my son. They're both big history buffs. My brother would be so disappointed that I didn't pick that up right away. <laughs> I could have sworn that was right. I heard it on the brighter side of blue. <laughs> you hear how forceful I said it too? Like oh, it just has to be. It. I agree with you though. I'm like yeah, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh Come back my. next week. We're going to go over Alex. I just trusted you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> just trusted Danny. I should never have. All right. So go right, right in the middle of the story about how TCU was asking all about you. Yeah. Or about, about his dad. It. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was crazy. It was surreal. It was terrifying, obviously, when you, you, know, you know what your dad's doing and where he is, you know, and you're just worried because there's things going on that, you know, you don't really know, especially when you go down to Texas and, it, and, and you're so far away. But I just remember watching on the news with my mom in the living room and just thinking, it didn't feel like real life. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like, well, that's, but then it was, it, it was my dad. It was my hero out there. Just my guys out there in, in a situation where, you know, we're, we're upset and we're, and we're confused. Yep. And yeah. Just hoping that. Now, were you home when it first kicked off? I, I was home during it. I don't okay. remember if I was home when it first kicked off, okay. but I, I, I do remember watching it on the news and knowing that it was coverage of where you know my dad was and my mom's husband, and we're just sitting there, and I remember we, we were holding, I was holding her hand while we were watching on the news, and it was just a surreal moment where it's like, you know, a lot of people around the world are watching this, but we're sitting here and it's him out there. And then not just him, it's, you know, obviously it's a family. So 
a lot of people that I know are out there. A lot of my dad's best friends are out there with him. It's not just it's you know your your uncles and uh, so it's I, I just remember thinking we I was terrified and then I went back down to school when I was a sophomore in college and everyone was asking I was like oh that's pretty cool now you know <laughs> right so you like yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah I know what's going on and you want the inside yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually the reason I asked was because I was wondering if it was broadcast down there too. Oh, uh, yeah. It was absolutely. Worldwide, I think brother. Yeah, it, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. That was, no, no. It, it was, was the first major getting, major riot since Rodney King. And yeah, it's even. Yeah, I was getting texts. On steroids everybody. every night. Yeah. And you yep. just. Yeah. Very good. I just, I'm just going back to how bad we're going to get ripped by our haters online about our history uh, in, <laughs> inaccuracies. <laughs> hey. that, that last debacle hey, listen, about. Listen. And I brought it on us because no, you brought listen, up Winston Churchill. I, the haters are going to be all I, over we, us. We just left it alone. Jack I works for left us. It alone. Danny, Jack works for us. <laughs> He's going to have to weed out. So he'll, <laughs> be right. he'll be right by the time he hits the air. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. awesome. Good job, That was Brian. a good lead into uh, Steve Dodge, who's going to be coming up next. And, and uh, welcome back to town, and Thanks. great luck on your new job. And uh, we're, we'll be rooting. We'll still be rooting for you, even though you're not a baseball player. Yeah, never count and it out. I'd like to shout out to Mary Beth, your sister. Right, well, she's you know, she's the real hero. Of this. Newly engaged. Yeah. Newly engaged. Newly engaged. Oh, because yeah. if we're going to mention all the Howards, we got to mention all the Mason, Howards. Mason's going to be entering the Howard family. She hasn't put uh, that on her social media yet, so you might have just. That's she two better get it on there by Saturday. Nah, she's uh, yeah, yeah. She better get it going <laughs> by Saturday. Right. Yeah. She's, she got a day or two. Her history teacher's going to find out about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right, brother. All right. See you guys. Thank you. I never mind now. All right. Welcome back. As promised with Chief Steve Dodge from Columbo's Cafe and Tavern in Dogtown. That's not where he's from. He's from Sunset Hills. Oh, yeah. He's from Sunset Hills. You're Sorry, not from Columbo's? Sunset Hills. He's not <laughs> I mean, I'm using a long what, time. Where's your hey, Steve? Where is your Where does your city rank in safe? You know, top cities to live in. Yeah, Chief Speece is dominating seven. you right now, isn't he? A little bit. You don't have the answer to yeah, it. Yeah, you never told me who the publication was for that rank. First of all, you should have yeah. just said it was we're three. Brentwood Gazette. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you, exactly. and they were seven. <laughs> 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 you, sh- you should have just said like third. You said we're ranked three, three in the country. That's pretty good. H- have they been to the promenade? <laughs> oh. I can't believe it. Oh, I'll be honest. Oh, now we're just lobbing no. in shots. Boys, Chief Speech over here. Just, I, just, I can't believe no, it. Just, he just, he, I'm going to have to give him the mic at the end of the show just to come up here and rebut this some of his, oh, the poor lot. He, he's just getting hit grenade after grenade. I got I to gotta say, I think uh, Sunset's a nicer place to live. I'm partial oh, to go. it. Here, doubt, now we just eliminated. We've just alienated all of our Brentwood listeners. All right. Just, well, just, just, hey, just let him have. Right. Just it's let, a close race. Just but. let Chief Spees have this victory. All right, okay, he he needs it. I hate it. All right. We're all right. non-political and non-jurisdictional. We don't pick jurisdictions. We don't pick the. You know. We're we're simply podcaster history buffs. We don't like we do we do not like Brandon Johnson from Chicago though. Well, he's. I like him. He just doesn't like our dead presidents. I, you know, I'm That's kind of crazy, of our dude. That's our history. That guy was a great. Nice he was a great man. He was. Before we get on with Chiefs uh, <laughs> Dodge and and talking about the Ferguson, uh, uh, producer John, are you uh, sitting on any newsroom.com over there? Come on. Where's I mean, that? Where's our? He's energy? got inspiration too. Uh oh. Listen to this music. You're gonna like this. Well, the music's not starting yet because I have a little business to take care of first. First of all, I want to thank JJ for bringing me this autograph. Raquel Welsh photo that <laughs> half of it's uh, kind of rubbed off or faded out. I don't know how that well, happened. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> really, that's a poor selection of words. It, Raquel <laughs> Welch and rubbing one off. That's, this, is, this is great. Here that's been go. sitting in my Here office forever. Actually, d- yes. I actually, did I put it up on your... That was in the mobile office. Yeah. You had a hang. I, I actually I, posted I that. The, yeah, I can see where this is. Is that the one I posted Trump up in your so office that time? In this, in, in, no, in actually, it was... Uh, uh, special Ops office when we were and I were sharing a special ops office yeah. in Central Patrol. Raquel Welch. Well, and she was brought up in one of the early... Right, that's why, right. That's why oh, you, yeah, you yeah. were a fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. I was a fly on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> a little creepy, but that's all right. Mm-hmm. Where's our energetic uh, uh, newsroom.com music? One more thing. Uh, oh, you're like a... You got a I'm, whole I'm, I'm kind of teasing an event that's coming up in November that we're oh, going to be involved in. This is cool. The St. Louis Classic Rock Preservation Society is having a trivia night on November 2nd. Uh, we're uh, we're going to be guests at, at, at this. We're going to have our own table up at the front. 
and I think we will, you know, we'll be part of the program. So uh, it's it's a great, uh, it's a nonprofit uh, that raises money. This this particular event is everything is going to Backstoppers, oh, nice. like it was last year, but it's going to be on uh, November second at the uh, uh, IBEW Local One Nutrition's Hall, yeah. on Elizabeth, and uh, you can if you want to check out more, it's uh, stlouistrivia.com. And kudos to them for fi- getting that, uh, you know, that domain name, stlouistrivia.com. That's pretty that's good. If they have a history segment, we're not going to do we're too well. It. We'll 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 kill that segment. You yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Well, they're all music questions, so we should Ooh. we should go right. All right. We're going to be in trouble. Then we have newsroom.com. Music by Black Sabbath. I love it. All right, well, we're talking about the riots tonight, uh, obviously, and um, I did a little uh, research on riots in, in St. Louis, and there was one in 1949. It's called the St. Louis Pool Riot. Pool Riot. Um, it happened at Fairgrounds Park. Um, you know, believe it or not, like in the early 1900s, they built a huge swim pool in Fairgrounds Park. It was supposedly the biggest public pool in the country at the time. It was round. It was 40 feet in diameter. They had sand beaches. It's, it, was, it was pretty spectacular, apparently. Well, you know, back up until 1949, all the pools in St. Louis were segregated. You know, so they had black pools, they had white pools. Well, there was a, uh, a federal court uh, decision uh, that concerned uh, black people being able to access public golf courses. And, and the court ruled that it was a violation of the 14th Amendment to have them excluded from you know, public places. So that, that went over to you know, the, the city saying, well, we're gonna start, we're, we're gonna desegregate all our pools. Well, this was like the crown jewel of all the pools. So on, the, on uh, June 21st of 49, they had the first day where anybody could swim there. So 30 to 40 black kids showed up. Um, and by all accounts, for the first few hours, all the kids, black and white, played together. They had fun, no problems. But as the day went on, uh, a bunch of teenagers showed up and started yelling at the black kids in the pool. These kids like were on the outside of the fence. It got so bad that at a certain point they, they took all the kids into the, uh, the, like, the locker room and they called the police and, and the police had to get the kids out you know, safely. So it kind of picked up from there and eventually like a couple hundred people showed up, you know, white people showed up to, to protest the, the black kids being able to use the pool. Um, a couple hours went by, a couple hundred people there well, around seven o'clock, a rumor got out in in the city that a black man had been killed at Fairgrounds Park by a white guy. And now, all kinds of people, they ended up with thousands of people showing up at Fairgrounds Park. Um, there was no um, gunplay or anything you know, back then, but people showed up with bats, broken bottles, bricks, what, you know, whatnot. It, uh, it got to the point where everybody was, you know, everybody in the park was fighting. Uh, There's different accounts, but they said it took a couple hundred policemen to break it up. Luckily, it, you know, they got it kind of calmed down by about nine o'clock. And, uh, you know, in the end, uh, 12 people were injured. Only six of them were injured enough to actually have to go to the hospital. Eight people were, um, uh, were arrested for inciting riots. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, well, that's about it. So anyway, it got to the point where the, the city panicked. They, they, you know, they segregated the pools again for a short period of time till they could calm things down. And actually, the a couple years later, the, the fairgrounds park they just closed it down, and and uh, that was the end of it. But um, just another, you know, example of. You know, an incident happening where it, it turned into it got out of control, at least for. It's know. called the 1949 pool riots. Yeah, Fairgrounds Park pool riot. Fair, wow, the state of the St. Louis in 1949. That's it in June. Hmm. Circular pool with sand and everything it sounded like a nice ass pool. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, I think it's a lake now. Is it the lake? I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah. 
He's through that out there. I, I've seen a pool there. I, I don't it's know. It's a big. There's a one. big it's lake there. It's Cat Creek. Tanisha's saying it doesn't even exist there anymore. She's saying bullshit. All right. Thanks for calling me out, Tanisha. You just threw that out randomly. I, d- I totally just was just throwing shit down there to see if it'd stick. No, I'm with you. I, I'm all about that. <laughs> you know me. I'm, well, let's see right. what uh, Sheriff Grady says about all this. Yep. Here's what Sheriff Grady going to say. You have trouble understanding that. Let me give it to you in Polk County vernacular. This is the last thing you'll see before we put a bullet through your head if you're trying to hurt our children. We are going to shoot you graveyard dead if you come onto a campus with a gun threatening our children or shooting at us. There you go. Hmm. You know what? I'd like to see you know did that? Uh, uh, che- uh, him and Mayor Brandon Johnson oh, in a, uh, debate? In a the, debate. A debate on how to, debate. how to curb crime. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know if uh, Chief Grady would be down for the George Washington thing, but he doesn't appear... That he would want to take George Washington out of his uh, city hall. No. Nope. I, I, he's still our favorite. Yeah. He, he's, you know who charged a, a schoolyard, a school, and took care of business? We can't really talk about it. Who's that? St. Louis City. Damn right they did. Damn right. We're still waiting to get approval One of the best for that. responses. And then, and then when, that, when that story does come out, we're going to have some of those people on. Um, but what right was now, the name of the high school? Visual and Performing Arts? Central. Central, I think. Yeah. Central. I know it was my old high school. It was yes, Southwest. Southwest. Back Southwest, Southwest back right. All the old heads know the Southwest. When you were playing the offensive line for the Southwest Longhorns. I did. did you <laughs> Apparently I missed history class. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. You and JJ were out. <laughs> Didn't you yeah, have a yeah, store lid <laughs> on your football field? Or was yeah. that St. Mary's? It wasn't ours. There was a large sore lid right on the football field. In the middle. Put a cone on it. I think it's Roosevelt. Chief Dodge, sorry you had to uh, suffer through all that. It's okay. And, uh, but you probably learned a lot about history and like presidents and world wars listening. Yeah, I mean, it just reminds me that, you know, Ferguson really was a day that will live in infamy. <laughs> yeah. Famous, Who said a, that? A famous speech by Harry S. Truman after we bombed Pearl Harbor. <laughs> Sums it up. There Chief, you go. So <laughs> after we great job Pearl. on that segment. <laughs> uh, You're all college educated. Is everyone here graduated? I, I, I had a couple. I, I dabbled. Associate. I <laughs> dabbled. Not even that? I'm hammered. Okay. I'm JJ, ha- you got a I'm, hammer- I'm hammered. I'm <laughs> hammered. <laughs> You're a knucklehead. I did well in the yeah. academy. Hey, though. I'll be honest. Tommy did. He, apparently, he slept through the academy and he got the highest grades. But I really stopped listening to Danny a while ago, so I didn't even hear him say it. <laughs> you just said, yeah? Yeah, I said, yeah, whatever. I agreed with you. Thank Let's you. get on to the riots. But um, one of the things that's really cool is that, and not cool, but uh, Steve was the, uh, you were the lieutenant of the SWAT team at the time. Yes. JJ worked for you as a sergeant. Yes. And the riots kick off. Yes. So the incident happens on a Saturday. When do you guys, how, how do you guys get involved? Give us, give us a little background on how you guys get involved and when. So, yeah, so the original uh, shooting happened on a Saturday, and they, um, they had some crowd issues there at the time, uh, but nothing that turned into what it eventually turned into. Um, and then that Sunday, um, that's when I think more of the protest started happening. And um, then it got to the point where I know they called in St. Louis County TAC unit to come down there and they call it what they call a code 1000, which basically is so many officers from every department in the area response. Um, and I guess it, it grew out of control. So at, at one point, I mean, there was rocks and bottles being thrown at, at county TAC and, and the county officers, and they did not have any of their equipment with them. They didn't have any of their, uh, you know, riot gear. They didn't have their any of their tactical equipment. They were all in uniform because they thought they were just responding for a, crowd know, control, crowd control right. kind of thing, right. some protesting and that kind of thing. But then, um, pretty soon after rocks and bottles, it turned into gunfire. And uh, so this is Sunday. That is on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, that is on the Sunday. And um, at that point, um, actually, I, I was playing golf with with Joe Spies and Gabe Keithley, and we had just gotten off the golf course. And I had gotten my police car, and that's when I heard Cruiser One, who's the chief, say, "Hey, we need SWAT to re- or Mobile Reserve SWAT to respond down to uh, headquarters relative right. to the disturbance or relative to what was going on in the county." So what time are we talking here? Gosh, I would say probably 8.30, 9 o'clock is when uh, 
they called for us to come in. And we've so, been, I, we've been, I was hearing him. He was golfing. I was listening. I knew, I knew things were happening, and it was getting crazy. And then we kept expecting to be called in. And then when we finally got called in, we thought we were going to get in, get our gear, and go. That's not how it happened. And it was it became a political issue. And Steve, you want to take this part of it, or? Well, no, yeah. So I went and, and when I got there, I went and saw the chief, and uh, there there was some, you know, the, the mayor's office didn't actually want to send us right away, or okay. you know, I don't know if they want to send us, but uh, Chief Dodson was was lobbying pretty hard to send us because, you know. St. Louis County has always come down and especially they're tacking and helped us on various events, you know, whether it's, you know, the all-star game, soccer games, fair St. Louis, they, right. they've always come down and have been really good about helping us with, with all kinds of events. And they were in a bad, bad way down there. And, and JJ, I'll let you tell the story well, later on. Well, I just want to say one thing though. Um, I'll tell the story about Matt Pleviak was a, just got promoted to captain. He was a sergeant down there at the time. And I've talked to him. I worked with the, with him at the baseball and soccer stadium. Great guy. And we talked about it before. And he just remember his recall. And he's, he was like, holy crap, they're throwing bottles of rocks at us. And he had, and Matt's one of the guys down there with a SWAT equipment, guy. I'm sorry. He's but they SWAT don't have their equipment. They don't have so their equipment. They're and they're getting okay. overrun. Right. And he's like, he asked his captain. Do you remember which captain? I don't know which captain. Uh, it, Brian Ludwig. Ludwig. He says, down. where's city? Where's city? And he says, they're not coming. He goes, what do you mean they're not coming? He goes, they have to come. And he was, he was livid. He goes, it's a political thing, and they don't want to come. He's like, this. And he was so telling me a story. He gets mad. He goes, oh, we were so mad. We go down, like he said, we go down there for everything for them. Fair St. Louis, Mardi Gras, anything that goes on, we help them. And they're not coming. He was so livid. And he does say, and we'll get into it later, he says, I remember just being so mad. And it was getting, getting close to being like, we got to get out of here. And he heard us hitting our shin guards and said seeing us was like seeing it was like well, Christmas morning. We'll, we'll we'll I know, more. I'm, just, I'm just telling uh, you. But I, you might not that you're into it. This is how it went. Mm -hmm. But go so, ahead, So, yeah, so Chief Dotson eventually was able to convince the mayor's office, hey, we, we need to go down there and we need to help them. And so at that point they said, hey, Steve, get your guys, go. And uh, head down. I think originally we were going to, for some reason, we were, I, I, Wait, he, like, said. he said he had a stage at North Patrol right. while he worked on getting approval for Let me give to credit to somebody there. else, though. Layshock was the one that came down and was passing all the information to us. And he came down to our on the fourth floor. We're waiting to hear what we're going to do. And he says, just get down there. We haven't got permission yet. Get your yeah. gear, get your bear, get and go as far as you go up to our North Patrol is right there. Yeah. Union, it's just a mile away or mile and a half from away Ferguson. from Ferguson. Just sit there and stand by. And right. then that's... And, yes, then that's and then eventually we got the green light to go to Ferguson where we went to the Buzz Westfall. We went to Buzz Westfall Center. Right. And then uh, we saw uh, Chief Belmar, and Chief Belmar saw us, and uh, he was very happy to see us. But he's, <laughs> he's like, he's like, you know, they're down by the QT. Well, he gave us a William Wallace, William Wallace speech from Braveheart. I mean, he just said, "Hey, get down there." And, right. And, and no, I'm gonna tell you what he said. No, he was mad. He was so frustrated because his guys are getting overrun. When he saw us, he was so he goes, "Get down there and." Lock them. Do, you, do your thing. Do your thing. He's locked their asses thing. up. And we're like, holy crap. So that's how we started going down there. And, and I get to give Sam Monte. And, and so I, I had a, a squad, and Sam Monte had a squad. And he, of course, he was the lieutenant. And he said, get your squads. Let's line up and let's start going. So we started marching down there. And Sam Monte, I get to give Sam. Are in, uh, column, we were probably in column. We were in column. Column, two. column, two. column, two. column, two. column yeah. two, walking straight. And Sam Monty, we practiced this stuff. This just was like so much chaos going on. And all of a sudden, Sam Monty started hitting his shin guard. And then we all picked up on it. And we all started hitting him in cadence. And we were going quick. We were walking fast to get to there. And I remember it was another department caught up with us on the Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol. And, and then they started, their, and they their started doing too. the shin guard They too. did. Yeah. And then when we got down to the where it was all the stuff was going on, right with the quick trip. And then I always said the quick trip just started catching on fire. It was just a, we could see the windows were broken out and the, and one of the aisles was on fire. And Lieutenant Dodd said, JJ, take your squad, clear off the parking lot, push the parking, you know, clear the parking lot, and we'll see the fire department come in and, and put it out. No, the fire department was <laughs> they never coming in. They never came that down. That was my plan is let's, let's secure the, the, the corner and get the fire department in there to, to put out the fire. But they're like, no, we're not coming. And, which I don't blame them because there's, you know. Well, I, I remember that. So Monty's squad took the. the the front on the, on West floors and they lined across and kept kept the line and my guys pushed off on it it was getting dark it was, and then uh, all of a sudden every huh it was, yeah, it was night it was dark so I remember 
uh, all of a sudden shots to my left, shots rang out. And it was like, Baba. And I looked over because it was dark. And I saw all of my, the officers that I work with. And they all started scrambling behind the bear. I'm like, holy crap. I thought someone got shot. I'm like, holy shit, someone got shot. So I started to walk over there. And I'm, I'm the sergeant of my guys who got to hold the quick trip. And I remember, i never forget Matt Tesfro goes, Sarge, Sarge, what are you doing? I go, they're getting shot. He goes, you can't go. You got to stay with us. And I'm like, he's right. So I just stood there. I felt helpless watching them guys run around. And then. Um, but you had to stay focused on what the assignment right. was. And right. then the thing was, no, thank, thankfully, uh, no one was shot from citywide. And then we, and they were shooting get stuff. It was like a little, over like in a yard, over a fence or something. It was the shots came out. Do you remember? Yeah, we were facing down uh, West Florissant, and uh, um, they were throwing a bunch of rocks and bottles at us. And so, you know, at that point, I, um, I think it was Major Layshock or Colonel Layshock at the time said, hey, you know, Major. we're going we're gonna to start deploying gas just so you know. We're going to go through our use of force continuum on this. And then so you go, you know, you start out with inert gas, which is our inert smoke, which is regular <laughs> Fake smoke, gas. And you try to, you know, you tell them right. to leave. You tell them to leave. And if that doesn't work, then you work your way up. And uh, so we got to pepper ball, and then when we started shooting pepper ball, that's when they started shooting at us. Right. I want to go back just a little bit and set the, the, the you guys banging on your shin guard a little mm-hmm. bit better. Because that, the, the, the guy you talked about, Matt Plebiak, yeah. right? Well, when JJ told me this story, I thought it was one of the coolest stories I heard about the thing, is that, you know, again, to, as we built it up, they, these county guys are under fire, they're, they're stuff chucked at them, they don't think the city's coming. And when Matt Plebiak continues to tell the story, he tells it that, and correct me if I'm wrong, J.J., he's mad. And then all of a sudden, in the distance, he hears those those knee pads getting popped. In perfect cadence. In perfect right. cadence. And, as they're, and, and, and then as, as they keep coming, that, that cadence gets louder. And it gets louder. And he's like, I would, and then J.J., correct me if I'm wrong, he said it was the best feeling that he's ever had in his life. You know. He said it was he like. Said, he said, thank God. Is what right. he, that, that, that's right. the quote I got from us. Oh, thank God. And it was so intimidating, though, that they tried outlaw it the next day. They did. They, that's how they, intimidating. Not, that's they didn't how, do it right away. You know, I'm not sure it was the next day, but eventually we were told we couldn't do it anymore. Right. It could, because you, of that You night, were intimidating right? the people that were throwing yeah. rocks, yeah. bottles, and right. shooting but at you? There's a young. You're a jerk. I wish I knew this young officer's name from the county. He ended up, I think he's a federal agent now. And he was part of their team. They used to, after that, we started training. And he was teaching different departments. And he says, I tell that story every time I do a class is how when you guys came down hitting your shin guards, how intimidating it was, how effective it was, he said, and how cool it was. And, and, and Matt even said the next day at the command post when we got there, because we were going back every day after that, said that was like Christmas morning seeing right. you guys come down there. So it was cool. I, mean, it was, I don't know how yeah. intimidating it was because they started shooting at us eventually. So it <laughs> well, could have been I mean, that intimidating. That's a good point. <laughs> well, they all want it. Well, and I, I just think Which it's is, good it was, it was, I think, I think the, Brandon Johnson called down there and said, Mayor hey, Brandon Johnson. Mayor Brandon Johnson. Johnson. You know, the most infuriating thing about the, uh, the riots for me, and I would spend some nights up there with Layshock and them, but at night, you, when the sun went down, the shit kicked off. Yes. Right. Shooting at Every us. Night. Bottles, rocks, uh, burning down buildings. And then and then in the morning, in the daylight, it was nothing. It was just peaceful protesters. Always when the and sun that's when down. the politicians would come out. Mm-hmm. They'd come and they'd, I walked the streets of Ferguson. Yeah, you, but you made sure your ass was out of there by sunset. <laughs> right. And then, that, oh, right. it wasn't that bad. Everybody's behaving. It was peaceful. These people are peacefully protesting. Why are you leaving before it gets dark? You know, stick around. Walk with us then. No. And they wouldn't do it. No. God. Well, I, re- I remember giving you, and I, th- I think I told this before, um, the, what, what was your rank? You were a captain? I was a captain. Captain, and so was Joe. Was he a major? Uh, Joe was a captain as well. So No, you were a major then? Major. All right. So they came down early when it was still daylight. Yeah. And they were like, let's give us a tour. So I let them jump in my police car. Down and we gave sightsee? it. They went and sightsee. That. We went driving down all the way down West Florida and came back. And then so we come back. They're just getting more and more people. And I, they'll, I know they, they know the story because we talked about it. There was a little kid probably, how old do you think that kid was? Nine. Nine. He looks at us and flips us off. <laughs> I rolled out and I go, hey, I go, let's make, you know, this, uh, good to see you. He goes, young man. Oh. You know what? Nine and, years old. I go, oh, yeah. they hate us out here yeah, in Ferguson. Did. No, no, but we did laugh, though. But Steve's got a story that's exact opposite of that uh, when you guys drove past. Yeah, the, I mean, you want me to tell it now or we want to go yeah. through anything with Ferguson? There? Let's keep going. We'll go back. Okay. We'll go back. But well, no, it was, uh, it was after Ferguson had been done. And obviously, you know, we were down there for two weeks straight, and it was people yelling at you, calling you everything okay. under the sun, and and police are bad and, guys. And, at and this the media point. coverage right. was, it was very anti-law enforcement, and 
So I think a lot. I think it starts to take a toll on on police officers. Is that all the negativity towards them and everything else, and uh, you know, it hurts morale. And I think it may have affected the morale down on Mobile. Well, I remember shortly after everything calmed down, it was like a couple months later, we had uh, executed a search warrant up in Walnut Park. It was early in the morning, and uh, we executed the search warrant. We come out, um, some family and friends showed up of whoever's house it was, and same thing. They're yelling at us, calling us every name of the book, right. whatever. By this time, we're kind of immune to it, though, so we're just kind of walking by, right. and we don't even pay attention to them because we're, you know, we're kind of immune to it. But we get in the bear, which is the big, you know, armored, armored vehicle. vehicle. Armored, armored vehicle that well, we used. Well known at this point. Yes, we we had <laughs> used in Ferguson and gotten quite a bit of coverage, ours and counties and everyone else's, and you know, call them military, you know, they call them tanks and everything else. So we're driving away in in Walnut Park, and as we're making our way down the street, there was a uh, a lady with about her, uh, let's say, you know, 11, 12 year old son, standing there in the corner, and it appeared to be that she was there with him waiting on you know, on a bus. Um, so as, as we approach, she kind of gives them, nudges them a little bit, and, and with that, they look up, and they start waving to us in the bear, in the big, mean military vehicle. And as we're driving by, waving to us the whole time. And um, I thought to myself, that was, that was pretty cool, because here she is um, in a very rough neighborhood where, the, you know, it can be kind of... Uh, you know, not, da- not dangerous, but I mean, you just don't necessarily want to show that you're very pro-police, especially at this time. But she didn't care. She wanted her son to know, hey, they're the good guys, and we're going to wave at them as they drive by. And I thought to myself, you know, with as much as hatred that was going on about us at the time, that that mom and that son is why we need to continue to do, do what, what we, we do. do. Right. And you told the guys in the and, I, and we had a roll call. Um, we had some kind of detail, and I, you know, we had the whole team together. And I said, "Hey," and I told that story, and, and I said, "This is why we need. We can't give up. We got to keep riding these neighborhoods and do what we can do to make them safer for that mom who cares about her son sitting out there at the bus stop, making sure he gets on the bus okay, to, to make sure he has a chance and she has a chance." Yep. So we can't give well, up because she, she loves us. I just want to say one thing, though. He said about the morale. Um, about a week and a half in, and we, he and I, Steve and I were talking about it before, um, about a week and a half into this, and it, it was long days. I mean, we got there, and we stayed late, and it was, you know, intense. It's a, it's a long shift, an intense shift. So we, he, he said, hey, when we got to start, we got to let some of these guys off. We haven't had any rec days. So he started saying, we need to, after we get, uh, we're done, before we go home, we'll get out there around, see who want, if anybody wants to take off. We'll start rotating them out. So he gives us a little talk, say, hey, we're going to start rotating you out. Who wants to take off tomorrow? Nobody. Nobody would raise yeah. their hand. No, we're like, someone's got to take off. And they're like, no. And they're like, man, we ain't, we're, not, we're not leaving our partners here. So that's a good, now let's go backwards a little bit. Well, they had FOMO. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> fear of missing yeah. out. Well, I didn't want to say that. But they know. Fear of missing out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. No, but no, they were dedicated. Right. They, they were. Dedicated. So let's go back, yeah. though. And then, so that first night. You guys go to what time? What, what oh, God, I mean, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Next day, um, you come back in 6 o'clock? No, I, I, I think it was 4. No. It was always 4, wasn't it? Or four, I think five. it was always 4. So these, so no, no, we, that. No. This is your standard days. Let's go through your standard days from that point forward. I thought it was 6 o'clock. Yeah, maybe maybe the Whatever. worst. But we would get, county got there earlier. County well, yeah, it might like, be right. I, mean, I, think county would, worse. I don't think county went home, to be honest with you. How many nights in a row is there conflict? Every night. How yeah, but, nice but there row. was we had a break um, uh, due to the political situation. We were there the first two nights, and then we got called off. We were told not to go down there anymore because it was too intimidating to have too many of you. <laughs> no, there was there was some there was some stuff on the it got political. It okay, got very political, we'll, we and, and and as a result of that, they did not send us. We were there the first two nights, and then the next I don't know two or three nights. Uh, they did not send us. And then um, there was a night when it got really bad. It was the night when they were kind of being light on enforcement. And um, it got really ugly. Um, the looting was as bad as it ever been right in front of policemen. And I think at one point they were making their way to the command post. So uh, we got a call from county. Um, and, you know, we went through the chief's office and they said, hey, we, we, we have to have you. We need you guys here. It's getting really bad. And then Chief Dotson sent us. He, he put us. Um, sent right. us back down, but there we had like two or three nights where we did not, go, we were not down there. We were just staging. But then, but get to your point. After that happened, and then then we were there. Then we were committed. 
every night, every day we'd get there, without whatever time, five or six, we'd get there and we, we had, it was the command post. So we had our own little section with all our vehicles and we'd get our bags out and we'd get our equipment ready and just kind of sit around in lawn chairs and talk and, until they needed us. They would say, hey, it's getting starting to get bad. And then we'd get our gear and we'd get on and we'd take off. But it was like, it was like, grud. Was it Groundhog Day? It was, it was always like, like Groundhog, well, you know. Yeah, every day you get there. Like Danny said, sun starts go down, right. and, and you know get, shit's about we, to go down. Right. We'd get our gear get ready. Yeah, we'd sit there, kind of talk to each other, kind of talk to, got to know the county guys real well. And uh, at, and after that, after it finally settled down, we ended up getting a big, and he can tell you more about this that remembers it better than I do. We did a big training with all the SWAT teams that came down to get prepared for when it finally calmed down. We knew it was going to start up again when the, the, ver, the verdict comes out on the officer that shot him. So either way, if he was guilty or not guilty, it was still going to be a protest. So we were training with all these guys, got to know all the different tact teams and stuff. It was kind of neat. Is that One it? One of the things that made me feel the best, and I can say it now that I'm retired, was there was this, uh, when, the, uh, when the criminals, when the peaceful protesters left and the criminals came in to do the unrest, there was this one guy that was just consistently in the middle of the street launching bricks at the line at us and, and just we, frozen bottles and this and that. And he was doing all the stuff. And one of your guys shot him right in the balls with a, uh, <laughs> with a, with the sandbag. With, with he a, wasn't aiming that. I, I know he wasn't yeah, aiming sure. it. was a total accident. It was a total we don't accident. necessarily know that was one of our guys either, though. Okay, There's a lot right, of other tactical officers. I, I got you. I'm not snitching anybody. But I'll just say this. He was just say this. throw of a brick like this. And all of a sudden, oh, down, he got down, down, down goes Frazier. I'm, not sure, right he, I'm not sure who it was, but he, he works for First Form now. <laughs> now, oh, you're really snitching then. Go. You're getting Come all on, specific and shit. Slip snitch. No, that was a slip snitch. That's a slip snitch. No, no, he's, he's proud of it. Would, he's proud of it, dude. I'm telling you, he was good. No, he, there was, uh, he did what he had to do. There was the same people there every night, but there was a couple people that always stuck out to, to a lot of police officers. And one of the dudes was Rebel Z. The live streamers. Mm. Yes. Live streamers. Streamers. So, so they, tell they, us where the live streamers came in toward, like JJ said, you guys would sit around prior to going down there. Is that who you're watching? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, because, uh, I mean, Twitter, this was like, this was, you know, Twitter really was a big part of this whole thing. And that's how a lot of, the, a lot of false information got spread. But a lot of the information and a lot of the, the live feeds were all on Twitter. And that's where all you had all these live streamers that were, I don't know, born, I think, out of, out of right. this event. Yeah, this is and, where I differ from Steve. And, 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 I and, never could listen to it. I could not stand Rebel Z. But it was kind of, it was kind of a... They all thought it was funny. It was, I, it was a good I, intel yeah, it was gathering kind of yeah. thing. Now, they knew we had access. So they'd like... <laughs> You know, Rebel Z who would you know turn off the camera from time to time, but yeah, you'd you'd watch. You'd was watch he in the what mix was all on. the time? Oh, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. He and he and absolutely. I don't care what you say, he was anti. He did not like the he, police. He might have been, been, but I mean, that's, but he was. In but he, he they provided he was great information about the what was going I'll on. Give him that. Yeah. yeah, but he was he was on. Like, was your families watching him? Like. Because there was a lot no. of families that were worried about people, and then you get on that. And you didn't have to watch him. If you, all you did is turn the news on. Yeah, the news every, he, yeah, every major news station was there. Covering right. Fox. You know, but he was in the CNN. mix. Oh, yeah. he was down. Yeah, he, was, he, was, uh, yeah, he was. He was. He got arrested a few times. They let him, in, they? They let mm-hmm. him into that. How many times did he get hit with mace? And, and, <laughs> and, and, probably, and, I heard, and I'll say this, probably more so than anybody. I mean, because uh, he, was, he was there in the middle of everything. Every one of them. Yeah. Was he like, was there other people that were that were there like every time? There's that lady in the wheelchair. Oh, uh, Juba, she, oh my God. Heather. 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 Yeah, she, she, was, just, she was pretty famous. She would just roll, wheelchair? She would roll her wheelchair, flip you <laughs> off. She really hated us. Roll her wheelchair, <laughs> flip you off. She, she really hated us. She hated us. Not, was, I've not Rebel seen her. Rebel Z hated us nearly as much as she did. What's her name? She hated us. Miss Jupiter, I think, was her Twitter name, but her real name was Heather. And yeah, she really hated us. Oh, so she would wheel. <laughs> yeah, seriously, she just she be in there wheel on up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she get get right the here. I'll she looked like a bag. She get right like in the middle of everything. Yeah, she, she would. She, she would get right. Did you mace her? No. No. Try not to. I mean, Come on. Here. She ate some if we some gas, gas once in a while. And, yeah. You know, because we had to deploy gas, and she was there. Yes, then she might. She would inhale some. We weren't, you know. What's that? Trying to trying to gas. You know, Miss Jupiter. The Fourth of July thing. Bag up, bag up, Terry. Put it reverse, Terry. Put it reverse. Oh Lord! Right. Back up, <laughs> well, Jupiter. Was no. Rebel Z the one that got his phone stolen? Where the guy? No, that was uh, Ma- Bosom. Bosom Mas- 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 Yeah, yeah. Because I was yeah. watching that live, he was filming. Yeah, he, he was, was talking you know, crap, and he then all of a sudden he, was a, he became stole big, his phone right after uh, yeah. Vonderit Myers. The Vonderit Myers. 
right. shooting. He yeah, actually that, 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 that one up. That was what um, he got thinking. So this is on the heels of all the stuff that went on in Ferguson. So yes. it's probably about a month and a half later, wasn't it? Something like that? Yes. And then um, an officer working secondary shoots a guy at Shaw and whatever. Oh, gosh. Down, right, right. In the in Shaw, Shaw, it was in the Shaw neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the stores. Actually, yeah, right. he, that officer worked for us. Oh, he was at Mo- mm-hmm. in Mobile at the time. Mm-hmm. All right. and then But there was... A, it was. I always call it the ham sandwich shooting. Right. Yeah. Because the family claimed that it was a He's ham sandwich. A subway he was sandwich. clearly carrying a gun, and which started another round of yep. riots. And this is, and they were just as not just that, that one. Just that one bad. wasn't as that was no, that was the, more protesting than than that was not as that, that no, wasn't anything the, like not that. as violent. No, no. They, 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 they. That was more traditional protesting that, well, that, that whole thing. I don't know about that, but it they, they was a little bit I, calmer than it was. I just remember getting shot at during that. Right, one, right, right. But they would start out in, in Ferguson and then they would get on social media and be like, hey, we're going to go down Where to the Shaw. They go? yeah. They'd go to Shaw neighborhood. So we had our, and that's when I, that's, I always tell a story. I told a story about when Michael was on, a young officer, and he volunteered to be on the CDT team. I was like, you got to be shitting me. So and I, I won't tell that story again, but uh, they would start there and they would go to the quick trip. Or they walk. They mar- the one day they did. They walked from there. They walked that quick trip in Manchester and uh, Van and Venner, and they took that. They took it over. They blocked the door and all that stuff. And actually, I got a, a picture of me plastered on the papers saying they called me a fascist because I had the big can of mace and I'm just talking to people. But showing them what you got. Yeah. Don't make me use this. But I didn't. And then actually. I remember they were they sat around. Uh, they blocked the, the I don't know if you remember they blocked the, the entrance so you couldn't get in and out. So we surrounded them and we and we were going to lock them all up. And if if I, you recall, I said I saw one girl. She didn't she didn't look comfortable. It's like she wanted to leave, but she was with her friends. And I said, Hey, I said you want to leave? You want to go? She's like, because they knew we were getting locked up. And she goes, she shook her head yes. I go, you can go. So I let her go. And then I said, Anybody else want to go? A bunch more jumped up, right. and, and they like all left. Idea. The rest were just hanging tough, but the, there was like four or five of them were like, oh, yeah. this is getting real. I'm going to get locked right. up. Yeah, yeah. And right. I, could, I could tell I by their body language they weren't happy. And I said, you guys want to go? We just came you. down here from the county to have some fun. We didn't know it was going to be Right, right. Yeah. 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 You, you know, actually get locked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> we're just giving stuff out. And we might cut this out, but you know what made me most mad? We're never cutting this out. I can guarantee you. During those, especially down there, and I remember it vividly, we had the skirmish line. We're keeping them off the parking lot. And there's these soccer moms that probably never, to be honest, they probably never even knew an inner city kid. And they are yelling the most vile things at us. And I always yeah. felt bad for the people holding the line with the shields. They just get pet picked on and yelled and screamed in their face. And I just remember this lady is screaming at these policemen and MF and us. I'm thinking, I got so mad. And I said, go get her. And I he touched like go get her she's you know and then when she read my lips she's like yeah, and she yeah. took off yeah. Don't need but the, all that. it was I, a, yeah. i'm not i'm not beating on fun i love soccer moms they're great they're you know they're good parents sure but there were so many that seemed like they were from areas that they don't even know an inner they don't city know kid they don't know and they're out there because they want to feel good about themselves and they were protesting and they would just call the policemen the most vile things and i think that's the hardest thing for young policemen or any policeman to sit there hour after hour holding the line and just getting yelled at and saying how Bombarded. stupid you are. And now we wonder why we have a problem getting policemen working for the police department now. Right. So that no, was my, and that's, that, that that was my that soapbox. Was like the, the, the thing that good job, JJ. We won't cut that out. <laughs> no, if that you feel good. better, we feel better. <laughs> we all feel I better feel better good. Yeah, uh, get it out, JJ. You got to rant, dude. Just let it out. All right. Well, I'm getting fired up. <laughs> you got anything else? <laughs> yeah. Well, I got something off the... Uh, well, let's keep going on this. And What else we got to talk about? Well, we're going to... I do. Oh, well, one, like you said, it was, it was nationwide. Every police department in the country was watching us. So after it was kind of settled down, it was in September, I go on my annual soccer trip with the police department, North America Police Soccer, NAPS, North America Police Soccer Tour. So I went. Oh, I thought that was because it was soccer. Everybody took a nap. Oh, hey. Boom. That could oh, be. Oh, Tommy. So there's, there's uh, well, I'll continue. There's <laughs> departments from everywhere, from, from Vancouver, Toronto, it's North America, and then there's New York and Cal- L.A. So we all go, and, we, and you get to know the, the, the people from different cities. So we got there right after the riots had just slowed down, but it was still a hot topic. And one of the New York guys said, hey, man, they saw a St. Louis guy in a St. Louis jersey and said, hey, how are the riots? And they're talking about the riots. He goes, man, I, he goes, that was crazy, but you want to talk to, to 
JJ. Because I was, you know, they knew I was a sergeant there. They knew you knew everything. So they, they said, hey, man, these New York guys, want, you know. they want to talk to you. So I was like, what do they want to talk to me about? They go, they want to ask about the riot. So I, the guy comes up. He said, hey, man, how was it down there? You know, it was crazy. It looked crazy. And the next thing I knew, I was surrounded by a bunch of New York PD, and they're asking him, and I'm holding court, basically, and telling them about the riots. And I'm thinking, and, and I think later on is, little do they know, they're going to be dealing with the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just starting, brother. It's yeah. going to hit every city, and it did. So, but they were like, they were enthralled with me telling the stories of what happened. That like he and I just yeah. told about, talked about. And I'm like, wow, this is kind of crazy. this is New York. This is NYPD, who is the biggest police department and sees the most crime. And they want to hear from a guy from St. Louis that has three hundred thousand people in it. So huh? it's kind of cool. It was iconic. Uh, as, as far as it was ex- extremely historical, I guess, because this I think. Where we're at now had a lot to do with that particular incident. One hundred percent. So, and then one of the other things is the. Um, I wanted to tell the story again about Lisa, mm. and when this is going on, Lisa's not only got Jimmy down there. Lisa. Lisa oh, is wife. Jimmy's wife. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you for our <laughs> listeners in Uruguay. Everybody she's, knows who Lisa is. She's not only got Jimmy down there, but she's got Michael down there, and um, so her her son and her husband both down there. In the mix. Michael's on the front line. Steps so on. she's obviously um, not doing well. So her and her, my wife, Connie, are, are friends. So Connie says, well, come on over. And, you know, we can we'll sit with you. So she was, and I'm not, Lisa was pretty <laughs> upset. She was, I mean, she, this, has got, this has got the anxiety kicking, and that's okay. Because, I, I mean, it had everybody at the time. We're two days into this thing. Nobody knows where this is going, and people are mad. <laughs> I mean, they are fucking mad. They are. Um, but now the policemen are getting mad too. There are a lot of mad people out there. <laughs> so uh, she comes over, and we're and every I can remember every single after ten o'clock news, they throw a couple news stories in, and then it was full time riot coverage till like one in the morning. I mean, good stuff too. Just smoke <laughs> flying everywhere, fireworks. I mean, so if you have somebody that you that you really care for down there, you're on the screen. She cared Lisa. more about Michael than me, but go on. Well, here, uh, here that, that was a for good reason. For, here, for good reason, <laughs> the street yeah, guys yeah. were in more danger than any of the SWAT guys. We, yeah, we yeah, were all right. wearing heavy body armor yeah. behind a behind an armored vehicle. Those guys on the line in the uniform, I mean, out there, they Absolutely. had the most dangerous job by far. The most Especially when you saw what happened in Dallas too, which was always my fear down yeah. in Ferguson too. But yep. those guys, those the street guys. We're out there in uniform. They, it, I mean, by far. I, well, the one they got shot at the one time in front of the Ferguson PD. Not that wasn't our guys. Well, the but one time they got overrun, and they were those guys were, were hiding in gangways. Right. While while they just got overrun. Not and my it, kid. He wasn't running. No, they were hot. No, they were they, they <laughs> ducked into gangways. There's like you know a, a couple thousand protesters, and you had you know maybe a hundred cops out there. And, and they got overrun that one yeah. Saturday. That was the worst. That was probably the worst night of and they, all. Of them. And like JJ said too, is they're the ones also that get all the ver- before it gets violent. Yes, they yes. take all the yes. verbal bullshit. Yeah, they had the I hardest mean, job time and time yes. again. Those guys up there, you know, because they what they want to do, they're trying to soften it up by putting regular uniform guys in there. Right. Which hey was fine during the day, but uh, like Danny was saying, at nighttime or when it, when it started to get dark out, it got ugly. Yep. And those guys were still out there. Yep. And uh, eventually, I think, you know, they'd have, you know, they, they were looking to get relief and get out of there. And it was, that was bad for those, for the uniform cops. It Finish the tough. story with Lisa real quick is that she, we were, she came over one night. She was going to spend the night. And it was early on in the thing. She's, she's very, so we, and I told Connie, I said, she's a little too fired up. <laughs> she's really, I mean, I'm trying to tell her everything's going to be okay. I don't know everything's going to be okay. I'm like, it'll be okay. So then, you know, Lisa and Connie were having their cocktails, and I, I, I told Connie, I go, just keep pushing, you know, we'll get her drunk, and then she'll pass out. <laughs> Lisa can go. Well, that was a bad idea. So you and Connie were passed out. Yeah, yeah. Was, and Lisa's still over there going, upset. oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, she'll, that didn't work out real good, so. <laughs> <laughs> she'll go to four in the morning if she has to. <laughs> you know, if uh, uh, Corby... Campbell was around. All That's a, this would, so uh, it during that happen like this. Well, during that time, if you remember, businesses were hiring because of the security issue. Yeah, businesses were having to hire people to secure their places, secure people, and different things like that. So obviously, you would call Campbell Security, security Group dot com or <laughs> get a hold of them online there and get your business protected. And then, if you need uh, any kind of other strategies, Corby can help them out. 
if you need uniform patrol, whether it's uniform patrol, not uniform patrol, uh, Corby can take care of that. And uh, I believe that uh, our boy Tom Malachuk hooked Corby up with the job this week. So see, see, that's how it rolls. What you get when you when you uh, sponsor the show, when we get calls, you get calls. Damn and right. uh, policemen are big on the, the whole network. If, if you know a guy, you know a guy. We all get called. Do you know a guy who does? And we this? know a guy named Corby. And we know a guy, Corby. <laughs> Security, baby. Good job. Nice, yep. tra- nice transition. Yep. Thanks. You had something earlier in the show you wanted to talk well, about. Well, I, what, I what just, is it? I oh, think you I, were going to uh, we're going to cure road rage. I think I got it. Yeah, Come on, let's go. You baby. got a cure. Just, let's go. And then we're, we're, we're kind I'm of done with this riot. Going, talk. Yeah, we're going on a long ways. But um, yesterday, I was leaving Schnooks. And I just got off work, went straight, to, and I'm getting. It that wasn't a big deal, but I get, you know, I make a left on the uh, Butler Hill, and this car just like and I'm pulling up, and he just kind of goes in front of me. It wasn't enough to get a horn, but I'm like, hey, buddy, oh, you want in? Do you? Didn't just kind of just kind of bumped in front of me, and I didn't. Even, it is what it is. But on the back of his car was hanging was a sign that says, "Baby," it's a yellow sign, "Baby's on board." You can't get mad at road you rage. Honk, you when, can't honk at somebody that has baby on Right. Well, I didn't even notice that until afterward. I still didn't, wasn't going to do it. But I'm like, that's, you know what? If we just get, everyone puts that on the back of their car, baby on board, you can't. Or you, permit driver. You can't. You that's can't. a good point. Permit driver or baby. Maybe that might be better. But I don't want permit driver. I'd rather have baby on board. But they, everyone has baby on board. You can't, like. No, you get pissed off. You can't like no. roll, roll up and flip no. them off and flourish my pistol. And stuff. I I don't know that that will work with you all the time. It's a good idea. Isn't it? There, I, I'm getting support. I'm just telling you that everybody I know needs you. to get I, that yellow. Like your idea. So, baby on you board. You already said you you would already accepted the move prior to seeing that. I mean, it was that. Yeah, if it was a diff- if it was a more aggressive no, no, move, no. I think you would have got mad. No, no, I didn't see the baby on board. I let him in way before I saw the baby on board. But That's as an aggressive is. move comes and you see baby on board, I still think you honk. No way. No way. I, I, I think to be safe, you do baby on board, permit driver, and put a handicap sticker on there. <laughs> you're saying nobody you're gold. Yeah, you're gold. You're gold. There you go. You can drive and however drive you 90. want. The triple threat. 90, the triple threat. Off. So you, baby, baby on board can go... All the way to the merge point, or do they have to merge? They can do whatever they want. They got baby on board. Okay. Might be crying. Need to get to oh, the, whatever. You know he he slip snitched to me that he uses the zipper merge correctly now, and he oh, works. Really? And he said it works. Imagine Am that. I correct? Imagine that. Uh, I don't know what Am you're I, talking dude. about. Shout out to no, Modot, JJ. Give him a shout out. I can't tell Tommy shit. Can I? <laughs> give him a shout out. It, uh, it, it, I was, it, I was it right. You were wrong. It, I, was I right. do it. I, it. It's gotten. I think people are listening to the show, and they're all starting to do it right. Well, Look hell yeah. It. Dodge corrected it. It's about time you did something. We have over 8 in million points per Singapore. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect yeah. They're it, listening, brother. The one guy no. in Singapore is not <laughs> no, merging no. at the merge point. The, 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 He's got a network in Singapore. There's people on rickshaws in China that are mer- <laughs> uh, doing a zipper merge because they listen to this show. Throwing those damn rickshaws. Hey, what's the, uh, what's the rule with Mary, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Michelle with her drinking game? What we have to say, how many what? times do you think she drank come today? Come on now. I, I just said that. I know come on now. Hey, yeah. Spies, come up here. Then she's got to. Then she got to drink because Spies comes up. Like, yeah, if if, if Spies's name's mentioned, you have to drink. And we I'd, I'd like to we give up some of my him. time to Chief Spies so he can. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing. Himself. I was going to do the same thing. Hell no! I, and I First of all, he was called. He was <laughs> called a competitive I think asshole the, uh, earlier. The, the, the cameras are starting to get low on yeah, battery. Yeah, no, we're done. <laughs> Tommy, how can you support our grassroots podcast? that's now worldwide. Go to our website, thebrightersideofblue.com. Yep. Then you got the Venmo thing. You got support the show. And we are going to, uh, John and I have talked, and uh, we're going to put a lot of good stuff on the, on the uh, Web website page. there with different pictures that we're getting. And we, we encourage everybody to send pictures, um, some of the old pictures that you guys got, you know, just send us copies of them and try to make some stories out of them and throw some other stories on there. And um, we, we've got a lot of neat things we're working with. Jack, we're thinking about doing some um, live feeds from here. You know, we're getting a little better to where we think we can do pull that off, but I don't. <laughs> we, we might have to keep that under lock and key. Um, is, yeah, Grant, is, it, is Grant Colombo that's the hardest? Yeah, that? That's the hardest species laugh the whole time. <laughs> <It is. laughs> he sees this thing going off the rails. <laughs> no. oh, really? Really? Live? Yeah. No, but you go to our website, and we're going to keep continuing to, to build that, right, Johnny? Absolutely. Damn, Skippy. And then, um, but yeah, that's how you can support the show and. I see these people using that Venmo for, for everything under the moon. They can do it in their bl- and they're blindfold. I want to start seeing some people support the show. We're going to grow this Five thing. bucks. Whatever. Take five. 
five, five times ten, five times Shit. fifty, whatever. Uh-huh. All right, Tommy. We out? What's the, what's the word? No, are we done? We're done, bro. We're done. Communities that support law enforcement are safer places to live. Peace. You know that. Thanks, Steve.